Hey, what's up? I'm Rachel Starr. Um, I am a schizophrenic. Anyway, uh, something I wanted to hit on today was understanding people um, who commit suicide. Um, people who have like really dark depression and stuff. The biggest thing I want to um, stress, because I know when someone um, commits suicide, it's very hard for those who are left to understand like why this happened. You know, I think the biggest thing we hear is, oh, they had so much going for them. And, and a lot of people are left just wondering like why. Those of you who've been through, you know, different depression bouts and whatnot can understand that you get like very dark, dark times. And it's weird. It's like when someone has depression or other mental disorders, it literally is like there's this button um, or switch inside of our heads that it's like a self-destruct switch. And for no reason it should ever be hit. And for some reason, certain people with mental disorders, it's like our switch gets flipped. And then it's like your body kind of goes into this self-destruct mode where all you can think about, all you can feel is, you know, the desire to hurt yourself and end your life. And it's really hard to rationalize yourself out of that. And um, I've had, you know, schizophrenia for as long as I, I, I know of. Um, I had hallucinations as a child and whatnot. Um, and I've had ECT for depression and I take a very high... Um, dosage of Prozac to kind of keep me level so I don't get really depressed and even then like I still find myself just like spiraling out of control and I remember uh, a few weeks ago I was actually laying in bed and having these horrible thoughts of doing something bad to myself and I remember being like whoa where are these coming from stop it and like it's like I guess rational me having to come out and talk to depress me being like this isn't normal all right, just calm down, you'll be okay. Um, one of the reasons I had to move back home was just my head got so bad that I didn't trust myself. Um, so two parts. If you're someone who has lost someone to suicide, understand that that person was in a very dark, dark place. And it is hard to control yourself when you're in that place, to, to think through, you know, what's going on and to think rationally. It's just like I said, it is. It's like this, this switch in your head is flipped and you really have no control over being able to walk over there and turn it down. It's just, it gets flipped somehow. Something triggers it and you kind of just gotta, gotta come out of it. Second thing is to people who are like me and other people with depression who've had that, that switch flipped, um, learn to recognize the signs. When you start thinking thoughts that, you know, identify them. If they're thoughts like you think that you're worthless, you're not. Um, the world would be better off without you, it wouldn't be. Um, just really anything, whatever your trigger thoughts are, it's going to be hard. And you might have to take measures to protect yourself. What I mean by that is getting around family and friends. One of my biggest thing is to go get around people. I don't care what time it is. Go to McDonald's, a 24 hour McDonald's that's open, like whatever, um, you know, be around people, let people know, you know, that you trust what you're going through. And of course, if you feel like you're going to hurt yourself or others, you need to go to a hospital, um, doctor, etc., and, you know, be taken care of. You're worth living. You're worth living an awesome life. Okay? Alright. I'm Rachel Starr. That's not... Hey! Doggy! Itchy butt. Yeah, you. Sorry, my dog's being annoying in the background. Um...